Hey, Dad, are you there? Can you please get back to me when you get this message? Thank you. Oh, hey, Rachel. What's up? Is everything okay? It's Mom. She passed out. I don't know what's happened to her. Wait, what? You mean your mom just fainted just like that? Is she sick or something? I don't know. I don't think she's sick. But she hasn't been getting enough rest. She's been working too hard. Working too hard? What do you mean by that? What's going on? Even just a couple of days ago, Mom was taking a bath and was having trouble even standing up after that. After we got her out of the bath, she had to sit against the wall just to rest in order to be able to stand up. Oh my gosh, that's horrible. Did you call an ambulance or take her to the doctor or something? Yeah, I'm actually at the hospital with Mom right now, but the doctors say that we can go back home tomorrow. I see. Well, I guess that means that they're not worried about her dying. What hospital are you at right now? I'll go over and check in on your mom too. I'm sorry, Dad, but the visiting hour is already over for the day, so I don't think they will let you in even if you did come over here. I get that the visiting hours might be over, but surely you can tell me the name of the hospital. I'm worried about your mom, and I'd like to be able to keep tabs on her if she's like this. But the whole reason that she passed out was because of you, so I don't think that I should let you see her. What do you mean it was my fault that your mom passed out? Well, the only reason why I messaged you in the first place was because I had something that I wanted to say to you. You see, the money that you've been sending us every month just isn't enough, and that's why mom has been having to work so hard. She hasn't been able to take any breaks at all, and now this has happened to her. Is your mom the one saying that I'm not sending enough money every month? Because I think that I'm already sending you both quite a bit, if you ask me. You really just don't understand how expensive raising a family is now that you're divorced, do you? Because it certainly takes a lot more than you're giving us. I'm really sorry, Rachel. I had no idea that I was putting you all in such a position. Well, you really need to try and think about others, you know. I mean, did you really think that we would be able to survive on what you were giving us? This is the whole reason why Mom and I ran away from you in the first place. I... I really don't even know how to respond to that at all, Rachel. Besides, you guys just disappeared one day. It was like when I woke up and you both were just gone. You just didn't notice us leave because you never cared about us at all. And you still don't care about us, which is why you give us so little money. Honey, you don't actually think that I don't care about you and your mom, right? I know that we don't part this time, but I still really do wish that we could be a family again. Well, we don't want to go back to living with you, don't you get that? You were the one that drove us away in the first place. I don't understand what's gotten into you. Are you going through puberty or something? You just never used to talk to me like this. What's got you so upset? What's got me so upset? How about the fact that my mom is in the hospital because you drove her to this point? I am just so disappointed in you, Dad. But, I mean, I had no idea that you two were struggling that much. I'm really, really sorry for not noticing faster. But if it really is about the money, then I can send money next month. But you would have never sent us more money if I hadn't told you about what you were doing to mom. You're a failure as a husband, and you're a failure as a father. No matter what happens, I'm glad that mom and I decided not to live with you anymore. Rachel, please don't say that. Maybe the three of us could try and do something fun over the weekend. How about the aquarium? Do you think you and your mom would like to do that with me? Do you think I'm in middle school or something? Why do you think I would want to waste my time at the aquarium, and with you, no less? I don't even want to be seen in public with you. How could you say that about your own father? Look, if you want to give Mom and I the money to go and do that on our own, then go ahead and send the money, but I don't want to go out with you. You should just stop talking to us and only send us money. It's all you're good for anyways. We don't need to hear your thoughts, we just need your money. Rachel, please, I really think that you're being unfair. I'm only trying to fix the things between us all. Are you kidding me right now? The truth is, is that I never wanted you and your mom to leave me. I still want to have you both in my life. Well, that's your problem, so sort that out on your own, Dad. <laughs> hey, Dad. How late are you going to be at work today? I would like to meet if you think that would be okay. Wait, what? You want to meet me? I thought that you said you didn't even want to be seen in public with me. Is everything okay? Is this some kind of emergency or something like that? Of course it's an emergency. I really, really need to talk to you about something. 
Oh no. Don't tell me that your mom had another accident and had to go to the hospital. I've been sending more money just like you were saying I should. I never asked you to do any of that. Don't go putting words into my mouth. Wait, what? But you did! You told me that your mom fell because I wasn't sending enough money. Yeah, well, I'm telling you that I didn't talk to you at all about you sending money at all. So again, stop putting words into my mouth. I don't get what you mean. I mean, I have those texts from your number. Are you telling me that it wasn't you sending those? That's exactly what I'm telling you. I didn't send those messages at all. But then, if they were coming from your number, then who was really sending them? Well, Mom took my phone away from me a couple months ago, so if anyone was messaging you from my number before now, it was probably my mom. You're telling me that it was your mom sending me those messages that whole time? Yeah, she keeps hiding my phone, and I haven't touched it in a long time. But I just found out, and that's why I'm reaching out to you. I, I had to wait until Mom was out of the house to even do this. So then, you're telling me that you weren't just avoiding me, but you just couldn't talk to me? That's right. And I guess that mom was pretending to be me this whole time. But anything that she might have told you as me until now is just a lie. Are you really sure that it was your mom doing something like that? Of course! I mean, do you really think that I would say the kind of things that she was saying to you? You know that I could never talk to you like that, Dad. Well, I really did think that it was weird for you to be acting that way. But I was just thinking that you might have been stressed. Or it was a puberty thing or something like that. I'm really sorry I didn't realize it wasn't you. Well, it's okay as long as you realize that you're talking to the real me now. And don't get tricked by anyone pretending to be me again. I'm sorry and I promise to try not to let it happen again. But why would your mom do something like this? It's because she wants money. I have to tell you all about what mom has been up to for the past year, but you're not going to like it. Okay, well, this sounds like something we should talk about in person. I finished work at 6. Can you meet me then? Yeah, I should be free by 6. I'll be finishing up with my club at school. Okay then, I'll see you then. I'll go and pick you up at school, so wait for me there after your club. Hey dad, what is the matter with you? What do you think you're doing? What do you mean? I have no idea what you're talking about, Rachel. You do realize that you still haven't sent us any money at all for the month, right? Why are you always trying to get out of giving mom money? I'm sorry, I just... I don't know what to say to that. Well, you do realize that it's all your fault that mom ended up in the hospital that last time, right? Are you trying to make that happen again? You know, this is why mom and I hate you so much. You're always putting yourself before us, and you're even willing to hurt mom. And you think that either of you were ever going to see a cent from me again? Excuse me? How could you say that? You're just horrible. You won't even listen to your own daughter anymore. Daughter? What are you talking about? My daughter's sitting next to me right now. In fact, you should know that she's reading all these texts as well. I know that it's you, Vanessa. So do you care to explain to me just why it is you're impersonating your own daughter? Wait, what? I don't understand. What's going on here? That's exactly what I would like to know, Vanessa. So why don't you come clean and tell me? Well, I mean, you weren't giving me enough money, so I had to try and think of a way to make you pay me more. I thought that if I pretended to be our daughter, that you might listen to her more than you would me, and then you would send me more money. Oh yes, Rachel has already spelled out exactly what kind of scheme you've been running. But I know that the reason you think I'm not sending you enough money is because you're always spending it shopping and buying booze and going to the casino in so many other wasteful ways. No, that's right, not right. You don't know what you're talking about. It's not true. It's really not like that at all. Oh, come on. I've been paying you $1,000 a month and you've just been using it to have fun. Rachel tells me that you won't even buy her new clothes. She told me she has to buy her clothes used, using money from her part-time job. I pay you money every month so that you can take care of our daughter and get her what she needs. How dare you talk to me like that? You really think that you know what my daughter needs better than I do? All I'm saying is that you pretend to be our daughter and try to scam me out of my money. But I'm telling you that I didn't have a choice. You have no idea how stressful it is being a single mother. 
I never, ever have any time for fun. You know that we're not even officially divorced yet, right? Besides, you've been using this money all for yourself this whole time. So how can you say that your life is hard? Especially when you're neglecting our daughter like this. Did you know that Rachel wants to come back to me, right? No! You... she can't do that. I won't let her go. You can't do this to me. What do you mean? You did this to yourself when you left me. Were you really so unhappy with me? Of course I was unhappy with you. You never did anything for us. Oh, really? Because Rachel doesn't seem to agree with you at all about that. And I don't agree with that either. I would also be taking her out to places on my day off. Sure, I was busy with work, I won't deny that. But I never ignored my family because of it. She's just a girl. She doesn't know what she's talking about at all. Oh, really? So even though your own daughter is saying all this, you're still not going to believe her? And what about what she says about you? How you hardly spend any time at home. How you barely give her enough money to buy enough food for herself. I really can't blame Rachel for wanting to get as far from you as possible. How about before you start insulting my parenting skills, you work on your own? You have no idea how hard I work to provide for our daughter. You don't know anything. Oh really? Because I hear that you're not even going to work anymore. So just what do you mean when you talk about how hard you're working? Shut up! You don't know what you're talking about at all. You don't know anything, so just leave me alone. Oh, I will leave you alone. You can trust me on that one. Especially now that Rachel is back with me. I'm going to be taking care of her from now on, do you understand me? I told you that I'm not going to let you get away with this. I won't let you take her away from me. You'll never get Rachel from me. Oh please, she's your own daughter and you're not even taking care of her. All you're doing is using her so that you can extort me for money that you use for yourself. And now that I know the truth, you'll never get her back. How dare you say that I'm using my daughter? You are such an arrogant jerk, do you know that? Have you already forgotten that you literally were pretending to be Rachel to literally get money from me? But you don't get it. I really did need more money, and I just thought that if I pretended to be her, that it would be the best way to do things. I don't really care what you have to say for yourself. It doesn't change the fact that you were using her. Not only that, but you used the money that I thought I was giving at Rachel's behest all for yourself. But you were the one saying that you wish we were still together. You were telling me that you wish we could all live together again. Oh, trust me. I don't feel that way at all anymore. Now that I know I wasn't even saying that to Rachel, you can forget about that. Well, I'm not going to divorce you, and I'm not going to hand over Rachel, so there. Why do you even want Rachel? All you want to do with your life is shop, drink, and gamble. You really think that it's going to be difficult to convince a judge to give me custody at this point? I thought I told you that you don't know what you're talking about. Rachel was lying to you. I know how to spend my money. And why would Rachel even want to lie to me about that? Because she's going through puberty. You know how teenagers are. You know, I remember when I went through puberty when I was a teenager. And I don't know how I would handle having a mom like you. A mom like me? And just what is that supposed to mean, huh? I mean a con artist like you. You're the one who doesn't even know how to spend your money well. But you sure know how to trick people into paying you. I knew that I was already giving you plenty of money, and I knew there was no way it wasn't enough. But it really wasn't enough. I was being honest when I said that to you. I really am working hard, and I just can't make it with the amount that you're giving me. Okay then, if that's really true, then how about you tell me just what you were spending that money on every month? Well, it's not like I'm keeping all my receipts or a careful budget or anything like that, so I can't tell you exactly what I spent it on. Okay then. How about you tell me how it is that money I'm giving you isn't enough? It isn't enough because I say that it isn't enough. I'm the one spending it all, so I should know. If you can't even answer that question for me, then I don't know how I'm going to have this conversation with you. And if that's all you have to say, then Rachel's going to stay here with me. Also, I would hire a lawyer if I were you, because I'm going to be hiring one to move the divorce forward. Do you understand? Please, don't do that. You can't do this to me. If you're really going to go through with this, then I'm going to call the police. Do you hear me? 
What are you going to sue me for? We aren't divorced. And you don't have custody over Rachel. Why would the police arrest a father for taking his daughter in because she didn't want to stay with you? And you know what I think? I bet the police would agree with me that it's better for our daughter to stay with her preferred parent. Hey mom, it's me, Rachel. I really do want to stay with dad. But I don't understand. Where is this coming from? Since when did you want to live with your dad? You really don't want to live with me anymore? Mom, I really just can't see my life going in a good direction if I stayed there with you. And I just know that dad is going to take better care of me than you are. What? What do you mean? Are you really going to just forget about all the things that I've done for you? You ungrateful little ingrate. Mom, what are you talking about? What have you ever done for me? I mean, I'm not saying that you haven't ever put any time into raising me, but I think the times that you've just caused me trouble has been way more frequent. What are you talking about? Think of all the ways that we've had to get over hardships together. Mom, please. You know that neither of us would have been able to make it this far if it wasn't for Dad's money. Especially since you never ever do any work, and you just spend all our money. You never cook for me, and you barely even give me enough money for food. Do you know how many days I had to rely on school lunches for my meals? Oh, what are you talking about? We have plenty of food in the fridge. Literally, half the foods in the fridge are rotten because you barely ever go and buy food. It's honestly not even a choice for me when it comes to choosing between you and Dad. Did you know that I don't even tell my friends about you because I'm so embarrassed about the kind of person you are? But now I finally managed to get away from you, and I won't ever have to put up with you again. So just sign the divorce papers and go live your life without me. It's what you've been doing this whole time anyways. Wait, no, honey, please, don't do this to me. I'm going to be in serious trouble if you leave me. Please, Harold, Rachel, somebody answer me. After that, Vanessa tried to fight the process, but in the end she signed the papers and I was able to take full custody of Rachel. There were times where I wanted to give up, but anytime I did, I thought of Rachel and knew that I couldn't let her down. Because Rachel did have to come and live with me, however, she had to move schools, but she was more than happy to leave since her mother induced poverty made her a target of bullies. After moving schools, I heard that Vanessa was seen in the streets publicly drinking, calling out for Rachel to come back. That was the last we heard of her since Rachel and I decided to move to a new town to get away from Vanessa entirely. I know that this transition is going to bring a lot of changes to both mine and Rachel's lives, but right now, she's my number one priority. I had no idea what she was going through while she was living with her mom, and I am not going to make that mistake again. I won't lose my daughter ever again. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to see more content like this. Hey Perry, where the heck are you right now? I want an answer fast. There's something I need to ask you, it's urgent. Huh? Abdul, what's going on? Why are you spam calling me? I asked you where the heck you are. Why do you keep hecking me? I'm obviously at work like I always am at this time. Huh? Which part don't you get? I said I'm at work. I told you I was heading off to work this morning after breakfast just like I always do. I seriously don't get why you're confused. I know that. I thought someone had been hit by a car or something when I saw the notifications. If I'd have known you were just going to ask where I am, I would have freaking ignored it. How many times do I have to tell you to not message me while I'm at work? Huh? Wait a sec. Are you really at work? Yes, dummy. No, but this doesn't make sense. How doesn't it make sense? It literally couldn't be any more simple. I'm dealing with a customer right now. This will have to wait till later. Goodbye. Hey, Boris. It's been a while. There's something I need to ask you. Is now a good time? Huh? Is this a duel? No, there's a bolt out of the blue. It must have been like, what? Three years by now? When was it we met last? Oh yeah, the class reunion. 
What can I do for you, pal? Is there another reunion coming up or something? No, it's not that. I just need to ask you something. Did you know my wife works at the same company as you? Wow, really? Hmm, let me think. Actually, now that you mention it, I'm pretty sure there's one person with the same surname as you. Her name is Perry. Yep, that's her. Do you know her? Um, well, I guess you could say I do, yeah. Now that you mention it, I do remember the boss saying that someone claiming to be Perry's husband phoned in today. Does this have something to do with that? I'm guessing that was you? Yep. Sorry to contact you out of the blue with this, boss. It probably all seems a little random and weird, but I do have a good reason, I promise. The thing is, when I called the company, they hesitated to tell me anything because I had no way of proving I was actually Perry's husband over the phone. I guess I'm pleased their security's on point, but on the other hand, it left me no choice but to reach out to you. I do plan on going in person over the next few days, but for the time being, I'd appreciate it if you could tell me something. Is it true that Perry got fired recently? I need you to promise not to mention anything I'm about to tell you to anyone else. Can you do that? Sure, of course. My lips are sealed. Alright. Well, in that case, yes, it's true. Your wife got fired the other day. I'm guessing the notice of dismissal showed up in the mail by now? Yep. I work remotely, so I'm at home most of the time. My jaw almost hit the floor when I opened the letter addressed to Perry by mistake. But why did she get fired? The letter was really vague, and I'm totally at a loss here. To put it as simply as possible, she got fired for repeatedly not showing up to her shifts. Huh? Are you for real? She works in a different department from me, so I'm not totally familiar with all the circumstances. But I'm pretty sure she hasn't been showing up to work for the last month. Or wait, was it the last two months? Apparently the boss tried calling her home phone, which was listed as her emergency contact on several occasions. But he didn't have any luck. But her emergency contact should have been my mobile. We haven't had a landline for years now. I see. This is just a guess, and I hope you don't mind me asking, but... Do you think it might be possible she changed her emergency contact to a number that doesn't exist because she's trying to hide something? I hate to say it, but I really don't see any other possible explanations. The weird thing is, she says, bye honey, I'm heading to work, and leaves at the same time as always every single morning. And today was no different. Even stranger, when I messaged her after the notice of dismissal came with the intention of asking her about it, she cut me off and said she couldn't talk because she was dealing with a customer. So either she's hiding the fact she got fired, or she still doesn't even know that she has been fired. She came home at the usual time, but I didn't say anything about it because I still don't have a clue what's going on myself. I see. Sorry to trouble you with all this, buddy, but do you have any more details? Anything is fine, even if it seems irrelevant. I feel like I'm missing a piece of the jigsaw here. I'm told, listen to me. You seriously have to promise me that what I'm about to tell you stays between us. Can you do that? I swear on my life, nothing leaves this chat. Alright, well, the thing is, apparently one of Perry's male co-workers got fired at the same exact time as she did. Huh? His name is Winslow. And my friend Lisa, who's somewhat of a gossip and somehow seems to know everything about everyone at the company, told me that Perry and Winslow were witnessed by several people going into a hotel when they should have been out running errands for the boss. Now here's where it gets even crazier. Apparently, the two of them stopped showing up to work the moment they knew they'd been seen. Eventually, their absences got so bad they both got fired. Wow. I'm, I'm speechless. This is nuts. That's everything I know. Sorry I had to be the one to tell you like this, Abdul. Nah, it's cool. I'm the one who should be apologizing to you for the interrogation. I'm sure you got enough on your plate without getting dragged into my private life. God damn it. Don't feel down, bro. I'm here to listen if there's anything you need to get off your chest. 
I'm guessing you're probably going to take some kind of action. Just make sure to keep a level head, alright? Ain't no woman worth losing your head over. Thanks, Boris. I appreciate you, pal. OMG, I'm so sorry, Abdul. The boss gave me a bunch of overtime again. Can you put yourself something together for supper? I won't be able to cook tonight. Don't worry about me, I'll be eating at the office. Got it. You've been doing an awful lot of overtime lately, huh, Perry? Huh? I have? No, I don't think I have. It's always like this at this time of the year. It's our busiest period. Oh, I see. Anyway, gotta go. I'm so swamped here, I barely even have the time to message anymore. Sorry, hun. Huh? And what's that supposed to mean? Sorry to bug you while you're busy cheating on me at a hotel. I already filed for divorce. Say what now? Abdul, I just got home. What the hell's going on with the house? There's nothing left here except my belongings. Where did all your stuff go? Oh, so you came back, huh? What happened to your overtime? I thought you were swamped with work. Why would you make me come home like that when you knew how busy I was? I think we both know you weren't doing overtime, Perry. So we drop the act now. Did you file for a divorce? What the hell are you doing, Abdul? You don't get to do this without even talking to me first, you jerk. You need to tell me what's going on now. You should know that if you really did file for a divorce without my permission, you're in big trouble because that's a criminal offense. What are you talking about? If I ever find out you're cheating on me, we're getting a divorce. Huh? Remember when you came home drunk that time and started screaming that in my face when I was trying to watch the game? Well, I kept a hold of the divorce papers you made me sign since I figured they might come in handy one day. And it just so happens they did. What? You kept those? OMG. Abdul, I didn't mean that. I, I just got carried away after one too many glasses of wine, that's all. Maybe you were too drunk to remember, but I did ask you whether you were happy for me to hand them in if you ever cheated on me. You yelled, Fine, asshole. And stormed off into the bathroom, so I kept them. I handed them in earlier today, that's all. I only made you sign those because you cheated on me last year. No, Perry. I most definitely did not. Why do you insist on clinging to this bullcrap when you know full well it's not true? Well, if you weren't cheating on me, how do you explain the fact that you suddenly started doing overtime every night? How do you explain the fact that you were so cold to me back then? I know an affair when I see one. A woman has instincts. Yeah, sure. There was an affair going on, even back then. Yours. I can't believe it's been a year already. Do you think I didn't notice? You're such a bad liar it was hard not to. You must seriously take me for a grade A moron. I was pretty sure I knew what was going on, but I decided to hire a private investigator just to be sure. He did his job, and with that, I had concrete, incontrovertible proof of everything you were doing. What? I, I did intend on confronting you with all the evidence from the investigation back when you accused me of cheating on you. But then, that very morning, your mom suddenly passed away. I obviously hesitated to confront you with something so serious when you were so broken up over your mom. So it went on the back burner. Not only that, but even more than you, I felt bad for your dad. He was in bits. And I thought the shock of finding out his daughter was a cheating whore would have been too difficult to bear. I decided to keep my private investigator on the payroll for a little while in case anything changed, and to my surprise, you and Loverboy broke up all of a sudden a little while after your mom passed. With that, I figured my best move would be to sit back and watch how things played out for a little while. And here we are. Is that why all your stuff's gone? Yep, of course. We're divorced now, so why would we live together? It's time for us to go our separate ways. I never want to see your face again. 
I already canceled the contract in the apartment, so you better get your things together and disappear as soon as you can. No, wait, uh, what the hell? Where is the proof I cheated on you again? Uh, these are nothing but baseless accusations. The past is the past. Everyone deserves a second chance. Uh, surely even you understand that. Oh, I see. You still don't have the faintest idea, do you? About what? You lover boy. What was his name again? Winslow? You both got fired. What? I work from home and I'm always around when the mailman stops by. A very official letter showed up and I got so curious I opened it by mistake without even realizing it was addressed to you. It was your notice of dismissal. When I did some digging to get confirmation, I found out your company had received several reports that you were seen going into a hotel with Winslow and you were supposed to be out running errands for your boss. I don't know which of you it was, but either of you or Winslow must have gotten wind of the fact your co-workers knew about your seed little affair. With that, you stopped going into work in a cowardly attempt to escape responsibility for what you did, and eventually got fired. That just about sums everything up. Wow, so that's how you found out. I also knew you changed your emergency contact to a landline phone that doesn't exist to prevent me from finding out what you were up to behind my back. I'm just grateful you were too much of a moron to realize your company would send a notice of dismissal to the house after they fired you. I didn't know they'd sent a letter. I thought we lived in the modern age. It's 2024 for crying out loud. They should have emailed me. How did you not know they send paper mail? How many times have I told you about their damn newsletters and sustainability goals pamphlets showing up in the mail? Huh? Anyway, I'm bored of this conversation. The bottom line is we're divorced now. I'm currently in the process of arranging for a massive compensation bill to be sent yours and Winslow's way. So I suggest you both prepare yourselves for a mountain of shit that's about to descend on you. Well, what a compensation. Hang on just one second. Why? Please don't charge me compensation. All I'm doing is asserting my legal rights as someone who got cheated on. But I've heard of people being forced to pay thousands for this kind of thing. I can't afford that. How am I supposed to come up with that kind of money when I just got fired? Plus, the job market sucks right now. My priority right now should be not becoming homeless, not paying you freaking compensation. So, let me get this straight. You were fully aware of what could happen if you got caught cheating on me, but decided to go ahead with it anyway? Um... And not only that, but twice. What did you think I was going to say? Oh, yeah, sure thing, babe. It's all water under the bridge now. Oh, no worries. Everyone makes mistakes. Oh, yeah. Something to that effect? If so, you're deluded. But you forgave me once before. I didn't forgive you. I just held off on confronting you about it because of your mom while sitting back and seeing if you did anything else. Not only that, but you skipped work for a whole two months so you could be with your lover? I'm guessing that means you were together pretty much every day? Do you seriously think that what you did to me is forgivable? But everything was normal until this morning. Sure, as far as you knew. But the reality? The reality is that I barely sleep these days. My appetite has practically disappeared and I'm so stressed the doc has me on psych meds. Oh my god. I must look awful. Because one of my friends showed up the day before yesterday after we did a video call because he said he was worried about how gaunt I looked. When he saw me in person, a weak, emaciated mess with huge bags in him, he sat down with me and we talked about everything. When he heard about everything you put me through, he pretty much ordered me to divorce you. Thank god my friend noticed I was in a seriously bad way because you, my wife, who I saw every morning at the breakfast table, sure as hell didn't. I have a fair amount of proof of the affair due to the fact I've had a private investigator on my payroll for over a year now, which I guess turned out to be the silver lining in this whole thing, because it meant when I finally made my mind up, I was able to finalize the divorce and move out in a heartbeat, which I did this morning with the help of my friend. Um, where are you, honey? I'm not telling you. 
Can we meet up? We need to talk about this properly, baby. I can't leave things like this. Well, I can, and I have nothing to say to you. Oh my god. I can't tell you how good it felt to finally be free of you. It was like this huge weight had been lifted from my shoulders. I feel like even my subconscious knew I was free, because I slept like a baby for the first time in a long time as soon as I got to my new place. Until your notification started showing up, that is. Why would I want to go back to being miserable with you? Gah! You should know I told your dad everything. So you can go back home to live with your parents or you can live with your lover, but one thing's for sure. Me and you are never getting back together. Oh my god, Abdul! Anyway, talking to you makes me sick. Bye. Apparently, a desperate Perry showed up at my mom and dad's house a few days later. My parents knew about everything that had gone down, so naturally they told her where to stick her offers of reconciliation and sent her on her way. By the way, I'm currently staying with my uncle in the neighboring town. For some reason, Perry's next move was to show up at my company's office demanding to see me. It was at this point I began to doubt her sanity because she knew full well I worked from home. Eventually, she had no choice but to give up and move back in with her parents, which is where she is now, under the watchful eye of her ex-military dad. He also forced her to break up with her lover as a condition of her moving in. It was around that time I hired a lawyer and sent her the compensation bill. Unfortunately for both Perry and her lover, their bank accounts were empty due to the fact they'd wasted all of their money by spending almost every day in a hotel together. They had no choice but to go into debt to pay me back, and now, they spend their days working like dogs while questioning their life choices. 